Welcome to Hard Questions, where we gather pastors together to take on your tough questions and answer them right from the Word of God. I'm Tom McGuff, the moderator of today's program, and our panelists include... Dr. Waymar Glaze, Bethany Baptist Church in Pittsburgh. Chris Gibbs, pastor of Crossway Community Church. Pete Giacalone, Rainbow Temple Assembly of God Church, McKeesport, Pennsylvania. J. Anthony Gilbert, Kingdom Restoration Christian Center, Mount Washington. Well, gentlemen, welcome. It is always a privilege to, to be in your presence and, and where we can lift up the Word of God. Our viewers send some extraordinary questions, deep insight. We begin this program today with this question. What is spiritual warfare? Well, I always go back to Ephesians mm -hmm. chapter 6 and verse 12, mm -hmm. where it says that we wrestle not against flesh and That's blood. Right but against principalities, powers, mm -hmm. against spiritual wickedness in, in heavenly places. And, and you know, I, I think a lot of times uh, that, <laughs> and I hate, I hate to put it this way, but my, my, the husband might think, well, you know, my, the wife is my enemy or my boss is my enemy. You know, and I, th I think that, you know, when we start looking at people and, and start, you know, attacking it from that standpoint, then we lose the concept of spiritual warfare. We do. Because, he, you know, Paul said it's not against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual battle. And so, I, you know, when we talk about spiritual warfare, I believe that there's a very strong element of demonic uh, influence, of mm -hmm. demonic participation that's coming against us and, and, and being a part of what we deal with, you know, whether it's with a person, whether it's with a situation, a circumstance, whatever the case might be, you know, there's demonic activity that's involved. Even to the point to, to go along with Dr. Clasis, he says, therefore take up the whole armor of God. So we know that this is a spiritual battle, that you may be able to stand in the evil day, having done all the stand. And that word stand, means to take a military stance. It's not a, a military stance of going forward, not a defensive military stance. So we are in spiritual warfare. Okay, wait, what was the last part you said, not a defensive? No, it's the idea of overcoming and going forward. Okay, so, well, I'm gonna challenge that a little bit. And, with the, and I'm gonna challenge it based on this because I, you know, growing up in charismatic Pentecostal type, you know, which I love, uh, you know, environment, it was always, we gotta go, you gotta go get it. Spiritual warfare, go attack, go create. Why would I have to go and get something that Christ already got for me? When you look at Ephesians 6, everything that you see, even to the point of the sword, now you said the sword, the sword is an offensive weapon. The sword is also a defensive weapon. Everything that you have here in Ephesians 6, I'm looking at 1 Thessalonians, but it's Ephesians is in there. <laughs> everything that you see in there is from a defensive perspective because look at this. If you have everything, you don't have to fight for victory. You fight from a position of victory, he already achieved exactly it. So it is a defensive. Uh, it oh. is a defensive thing because mm. I'm being attacked. I don't got to go attack an enemy that's already defeated. I'm being attacked, and when I'm attacked, all I got to do is stand, because that's what it says several times in Ephesians right. six. Stand. stand, therefore, when you've done all to stand, stand. Mm -hmm. it, you know, when you've done all to stand, stand. He already went into the enemy's camp. He already took back. He already did it. All I got to do is receive it, stand in it, and my fight is no. You're not taking from me what has been bought for me. And I think that's mm. the warfare. There's ne you can't. I, let me say this. A lot of people call stuff warfare that really is just their own flesh. Oh yeah, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, so right. there's, a, there's a balance between two. If you notice in scripture, you never see warfare in Adam's life or Jesus' life until the father spoke. When God spoke in the beginning, then you see Satan show up. When the, hell, the, the heavens opened up, That's the spirit good. descended That's upon him like a dove and God said, this is my beloved son whom I'm well then the devil shows up into Jesus' life. You never see it up until then. So warfare is, uh, you, you are going to get something. I mean, of course, oh, Christ yeah, yeah, already yeah, gave, yeah, gave yeah, it yeah, to yeah, him, yeah, but you right. have to go in and you do have to take it though. There you because, go. It, it, by faith. You. That's why I said fight, you. the good fight of faith. Well, how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So once God gives us the word, it's meant to put us into our inheritance. Well, it, also so, goes along, it also goes along with, with Joshua. There's more land to be taken. So in other words, the church must be a mighty army going forward. Yeah. Uh, if the church maintains that, I'm just going to stand. There's cities to be won. There's spiritual battles to go into. And that's through prayer, and that's, fasting. Go ahead. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying about going in and taking I'm what God you. has that's given to you. And once he yeah. speaks, so he it's going to put you into warfare. Right. Just because you didn't get a bad parking spot don't mean it's warfare. Yeah. Just because somebody picked on <laughs> yeah. you doesn't mean it's warfare. Matter of fact, it might be the fact that God's just trying to mature you. Yeah. But if they're spoiled, right. 
at stake spiritually, now, then you know you're in warfare. Let, let me clarify just for a second, because that's not what I was saying, that we just stand there and don't go get anything. What I'm saying is if he has already given it to me, right, then I, I grab you. hold of yeah, that, right. okay? Uh, I grab hold of that. What I mean by defending is the fact that there is, he has given me everything. And there's a lot of believers in churches today that are not holding on to what he already gave them. Okay, he already right, gave it right, to them. Right, they, right, it, it's been right. robbed by fear. It's been robbed by gossip. It's been robbed by their own lack of discipline. Stand firm. Right. Do not be deceived yeah. about what he has already given you. Defend that because Satan, Amen. look, Satan will come and take anything from you you're not willing to hold on to. Yeah, yeah. How do we well, know the difference from we're just having a bad day <laughs> or, or we're coming under spiritual well, attack? Well, you know, again, you know, I, I'm going to go back to, you know, what I said originally is that spiritual warfare includes satanic or demonic activity. Yes. You know, I, I like what Jay said, you know, if I'm having a bad day, you know, if I get, didn't get the parking spot that I got want, you know, that, that might not necessarily be spiritual warfare. But whenever you sense demonic uh, interference, oppression, whenever you sense, you know, that, that heaviness mm -hmm. of, of, of satanic presence, then you're in spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. You know, for instance, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to say Job. Look at Job. Mm -hmm. You know, he lost everything. And, and, and where did it come from? Who took it from him? You know, it would, God allowed it to happen, right. but Satan was the one that took it, it from sure him. And, and so, I mean, Job was just under such, you know, oppression mm -hmm. that, you know, he was, he was struggling. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but yet and still, how did he overcome that? You know, he, he began to worship the Lord. That's and, it. And, and that's one uh, weapon in spiritual warfare. One weapon of spiritual warfare is praise. That if, 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 you, if you praise God, I, I, I like what I heard somebody say, uh, that, that Satan doesn't stay around too long when you're praising God. Because he, you know, he don't want to get involved in that. In 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9, it says, be sober, mm -hmm. be vigilant because you have an adversary. Yeah. The adversary of the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Exactly. Now we're told, resist him, yep. steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So we're told that, that and then again, we're told in James, the best way, first, submit yourself to God, resist the enemy, the devil, and he will flee from and you. He will flee. Well, and that's the reality. See, submit to God. You can't submit where he hasn't spoken. Come on. So there's always going to be something that's at stake here. Now, one of the things I always tell people about warfare, if you go to Luke chapter 4, I believe Jesus shows us how yes. to deal with warfare yes. there. He goes through and he successfully defeats the devil. And verse number 12, or verse number 13 says, now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Yes. Warfare shows up when there's opportunity. So there may be, a, if I'm getting ready to have a powerful anointing and somebody's getting ready to get saved in my church on Sunday morning, I shouldn't be surprised to see the devil on Saturday night in my marriage because there's an opportunity that's coming. Are you with me? I'm not trying oh, to preach right oh, now. No, no, <laughs> preach, preach. We'll take up but, you know, preach. But, but there, it's an opportunity. The devil shows up for, for the steal, what's valuable, yeah. kill, kill what's living, and, and destroy. destroy what's being built. So you have to look at your life and have a spiritual perspective and say, is there anything valuable? Is there anything living? Is there anything being built? If that's the case, then the devil shows up where that anointing is to build. Okay, Pastor Jay, forget Saturday night. How about Sunday at 1130 okay, to 12 yeah, o'clock yeah. when you leave in the church? Because the devil right. is in the parking lot. Right. Okay, he's in the parking lot. And, and, and you look at too, when you brought about Jesus who was led by the spirit yeah. into that right, place, right. how did he... The, how, what was his spiritual warfare? He stood on what he had already been given. That's right. He said, it is written. And if we begin to learn what we have in here, right. then you know what? You can't take anything from me. It is written. And as far as claiming a city, I'll tell you what I pray. Uh, it's not, God, help me to go out and get something. God, you have given this to us, and we claim that in Jesus' name. It will not be taken. Our faith, our reality just hadn't caught up with the faith yet, but you have given it in Jesus' name. Well, Neither I, height, nor depth, nor principle principalities, right. nor any other created thing can separate us from the love of God that Amen. is in Jesus Christ. Well, I was going to say, you know, to, to Jay, and I, I love his point, and I know that, you know, Jay has a godly wife, so I know that they never have any disagreements. Never. Uh, <laughs> no, no, but I'm just saying, you know, if, 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 if you know, if, if that anointing is coming Sunday and just say something happens on Saturday between you and your wife, you know, it, it would be natural for you to say that, you know, this is not my battle right here with my wife. Exactly. You know, that, that I have to recognize that, that, you know, right. and then, I, you know, I, I have to, you know, overcome that yeah. by saying, okay, 
how can my wife and I work through this? You know, so that, you know, it, this is not something that's going to get the victory on Sunday morning. Drive separate yeah. cars yeah. to yeah. church. <laughs> You're so right, because if, if you, that's where I think also being into the spirit realm, because I look at spiritual warfare kind of like a puppet master. You know, it's kind of like he's in there and he's got these strings with different things and he's moving up here. And there's sometimes when that hand moves or when that person, that foot moves, it's not flesh and blood. There's something going on up here. And so if you're not in the spirit realm and you're not it, right? prayed right. up, exactly. you can't see the strings. Right. Right. So as a result, you start fighting a flesh and blood man, battle that, in the spirit That's it, brother. Realm. That's, that's right. it, brother. That's it. You know, and that's, that's what it. we end up that's doing, it. man. We end up seeing that my wife is my enemy. Yeah, my exactly. boss is my exactly. enemy. My kids are my enemy. They're not the enemy. That's right. You know, that's I right. need to realize, I need to see where the battle's at. You, you know, know, in 1 Thessalonians uh, in, in, in uh, 2.18, Paul is writing to the church and he says, for we wanted to come to you. Certainly I, Paul, did again and again, but Satan blocked our way. Yeah. So he's not even giving credence to anything that he's been finding, right, any persecution. Right, right, right. He goes, let's call the enemy what the enemy is. Yeah, and it yeah. is Satan. It ain't you. Yeah. It's not your <laughs> wife. It's not your husband. It's not your, it's not even church people that don't tithe. There you your go. enemy <laughs> is the enemy. It is Satan. That's right. That's right. We're going to hit the pause button. Okay. <laughs> We're going to hit the pause button right here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. You're going to want to stay tuned for more of Hard Questions right after this. Welcome back to Hard Questions. Gentlemen, let's begin this segment with defining who the enemy is and how the enemy works. Going back to 1 Peter again. Okay. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, so our enemy is an adversary, the devil. Clearly defined. Clearly defined. He's like a roaring lion. He's seeking whom he may devour. That's, he's the father of lies. We're told that uh, later on in, I think it's John 8, 44. Go ahead, Doc. I was just going to say in the parable of the wheat and the tares, Jesus told, told them who the enemy was. Yeah. He said the enemy is the devil. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and so how does he work? Well, you know, Paul said in Ephesians 6 to beware of the uh, wiles of the devil. And that word wiles actually means schemes or, yeah, or tricks. Mm -hmm. I, I like what E.V. Hill uh, mm -hmm. used to say, old, old preacher, I, I love E.V., uh, went home to be with the Lord. Me too. He said, too. but uh, the devil got more tricks than the dog got fleas. And so... <laughs> <laughs> you remember the title of his, one, his famous message? The title was, You Can Just Go to Hell? You can just go to hell. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Tough preacher. Good right. preacher. Right. But then, you know, in another, in, in another place, that Paul says title. that we are not ignorant of his devices. Yeah, exactly. And that word right. devices is the Greek word noose which actually means mind games. Yes. And so a lot, of, mm. a lot of things that the devil tries to do, he tries to mess with our mind. Sure. And so, you know, that's why we have to have the armor of God. That's why, as these brothers have been saying earlier, you know, we need to be in the word of God. We need to be prayed up. So when these mind attacks come that we are aware of them. Well, quoting right. the uh, famous theologian, Dr. Bill Glaze, uh, you can find <laughs> everything you need to know back in the first, was it 11, 12 chapters yeah, right. of Genesis? 12. 12 yeah. chapters of just, I have to quote you right, but you know, and you look at, well, you just said that, this, that the enemy, Satan, wants to play mind games. What did he do in the garden? That's how he got his way in there, playing mind games. What did he try to do with Jesus, as we were talking last mm -hmm. segment, over in the wilderness, trying mm -hmm. to play mind games? Right. Wait until he was hungry. Maybe Maybe hungry. Yeah. You know, waited right. until he needed angry. some food. Angry. Uh, hangry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and said, hey, turn these stones into bread. Playing mind games. Right. Playing mind games. But when you know who you are, you have that mind of Christ, which for Christ it was that soul submitted to that spirit, then you can have access to right. everything. Amen. And no, I know who my enemy is, but more importantly, I know who my God is. Amen. Mm. And he's, he, I like what you read. You said he's a roaring lion ah. seeking whom he may devour. He's a devourer. And I think where we, how does he work? And you guys have all alluded to this and said it very clearly uh, that he plays in the arena of the thinking right. because really in essence that's the whole purpose if our minds are not renewed we yeah. can't come into the inheritance that God has can God trust us to be able to have the right type of thinking in order to get the blessing. You know, everybody wants the blessing, but nobody wants to mature. Mm. So the devil knows if I can get you to believe, right. you know what, you can eat of the tree, mm -hmm. I can kick you out of your blessing mm -hmm. because it's all about obedience. That's so right. I believe the That's devil right is always after our obedience. That's why he told Jesus, mm -hmm. if you're the son of God, turn the stones to bread. God already told me I was the son of God. Adam and Eve, don't eat of the tree. So what's he gonna do? Try to get you to the tree. So whenever you wanna know where there's warfare, where has God give you an instruction of obedience? Because we're 
wherever the instruction of obedience is, the commanded blessing will be there. That's right. So he's after your blessing, and that's what he devours. My mind set on the flesh is death. My mind, your mind set on God, set spirit on the spirit is life, is life and peace. Amen. And remember oh. when Jesus, that very last temptation, when the enemy came to him, and of course he did seek another opportunity, what did he tell him? He said to him, thou shalt worship the Lord your God. What was he actually, he played a mind game right back with Satan because yeah. he told him your whole purpose of your existence was to worship me. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's when Satan that's good. left him. That's good. Go. Because, look, because he failed in his purpose. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Wherever right. there is rebellion, there is warfare. Okay, you're talking about obedience. Right. So whenever right. we're in disobedience, let's go, let's not sugarcoat. If it's not obedience, it is rebellion, mm. which means you are going against, okay, something that God said. So and if, you, if there is no peace in your life, if you don't have peace, you, there is rebellion somewhere. Right. How do I know that? Because the Bible says in Isaiah, it was a 26, 3 or so, it says uh, that he holds him in perfect peace mm. whose mind, the thinking, mind yeah. is stayed on him. So if my mind is not stayed on him, I've allowed something else to take my Amen. focus. I am in rebellion. And if I'm in rebellion, there is warfare. Amen. And you, with the question, how do I know it's warfare, not just a bad day? What's controlling me? Mm -hmm. if, my, if my bad day is controlling me, you know what? That's on me and I've invited warfare because I am now in rebellion because the Bible still says this is the day that he has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. So wherever there is rebellion, there is warfare and where there is warfare, there is, where, there is no peace when you are on the wrong side of that warfare. Well, and, and wherever there's rebellion, that's where the enemy, if he can get you to rebel, he still has access to you. That Mm. So that's why he wants us to not obey God is because then he can come in there and like, for example, I'll be transparent for a minute. God has given my wife and I a very clear directive and on having a devotion time and a certain way to do it. Right. Guess where the devil attacks me the most? Sure. If it's at nine o'clock on Wednesday night when me and her are going to go pray at eight o'clock, I'm tired at seven o'clock. Something else is going wrong. But why? Because if he can get me in rebellion, he knows if you obey God, I have no access to you. I can't mess with you. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if I can get you to disobey God, wow. I can mess with your marriage. I can mess with your money Everything. because there's a blessing in your I'm obedience. I'm praying for you at 859, bro. <laughs> 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 you know, I'm not saying that's the time, but. You know, and, and when we go back to this whole idea of the, the mind games yeah. Yeah. That, that, that he plays, you know, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10, he said, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Uh -huh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down oh, of go. strongholds. Right. Now notice what he doesn't do after that. He doesn't go and say, you know, don't, don't deal with fleshly temptations. Don't deal with the body. Notice right where Paul yeah, goes. Yeah. He goes right to the mind. Yeah. He yeah. says, yeah. casting down imaginations and every high thing that yeah. exalted itself against the knowledge of wow. God and bringing into captivity every thought, every thought to the obedience. So Paul realized the importance of the, the battle being in the mind. Okay, wow. how, about, how about this? We, wow. we, most right. everyone right. has heard the expression about putting on the armor of God. First of all, let's define that. What, what is the armor of God? Okay. And as a believer, how can I use that? How, how does God equip Ephesians me? Ephesians tells us, it says, uh, for, uh, with the armor of God is, take up the whole armor of God that you may be, all right, uh, standing, all right, there, stand therefore having your waist girded with truth, having mm -hmm. put on the breastplate of righteousness, righteousness, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, which you'll be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked one, and take on the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication of the spirit, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Oh, I love that. You know what's Good. funny is if you look at this, a lot of what we focus on in our Christianity are the last ones, the word and salvation. You so say, we're not yeah. living righteousness. We're not living this. It's like you got a bunch of streaking soldiers out there, you know, with a helmet and a sword with nothing else, you know, and because it, isn't it true though? I mean, we're a bunch of streakers out there and the word put on is a word that means in the Greek to sink into. Okay, so yeah, we are yeah. to be enveloped and surrounded. Some people do the armor of God like they do underwear. They put them on, put them off, put them on, take them off. Put, we <laughs> right. are to put it on, sink in and let it become one so with are. the new man, which yeah. is my spirit. Well, you know, even, even to back up what you're saying, the Greek uh, construction of that word put on means to put it on and keep it on. You know, you know, a lot of people say, when I get up in the morning, I'm going to put on the armor of God. No, man, you need to have it on while you sleep because sometimes, <laughs> you know, the devil, man, he'll attack right you while you're sleeping, right? man. Yeah, man. Sure. You know, so it, it means to put it on and keep it on. 
and, and its mm. principles. I believe each one of those, we don't have time to go into it, obviously, oh, but yeah. breastplate yeah. of righteousness, God's way of doing things. Yeah, That's yeah, a yeah, principle yeah. in lifestyle. Right. The belt of truth, there's a principle right. yes. behind that. Feet shall with the preparation of God. They're all principles that if we take time and break them down, it's a lifestyle that you mentioned that we're supposed to live perpetually. Right. You know, it's not something like you said, well, I'm going to take off my truth tonight, right. take off my yeah. righteousness tonight. Exactly. No, you're continually yeah. Yeah. in it. Right. Uh, and so I believe if we had time, it would be great, great teaching is break down each and every yeah. one of those and how we apply those as believers. And, right. and when we do that, what we come to the conclusion, it all comes back to the Word of God. Right. Yeah. It, does. It, right. it, it always yeah. comes back well, to the Word. Well, you it's know, one of the things I, that I did Thanks. when I went through, because I, I taught on the armor of God, and I'm not going to do this now, but actually I wrote a spiritual warfare prayer mm. that was based on every part That's of the good. armor. And mm. so, you know, I have this right beside my bed, and I, and I look at it, you know, and, and, I, and I pray the armor of God. You know, and just pray to, you know, the belt of truth, for instance, you know, I, I have this. It will help me to live a life of integrity and protect me from any lies perpetrated against me by the evil one. So I broke down each one in a sentence. And then, you know, like you said, the principles. So I'm looking at principles because it's very easy to maybe leave and then get tempted about something. And there goes the belt of righteous. I mean, the breastplate of righteousness, mm -hmm. you know, it's out the window. That's so right. if you're thinking about this, you know, I believe that's what, you know, the, the question was asked, you know, you know, how do I, how do I do it? You know, mm -hmm. how do I put it on and, and how does it work? Well, you know, for me, this is how I get it to work is that, you know, I've, I've broken them down into, like you said, Jay, principles, and then I, I make sure that these principles are That's true right. of my life. Yeah. You know, That's every right. day that I'm walking in these principles. You know, I can't help but think of the scripture in Micah. And what does the Lord require of you? But, right, not rivers right. of sacrificial yeah, yeah, oil, yeah, yeah. not even your firstborn for right. your sin. But what he requires of us is to live with integrity, mm. to treat others with yeah. kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. Amen. That's Amen. the yeah. breastplate. That's what yeah. protects yeah. us in life. Praise Amen. God. Well, we have a whole lot more left in this program, so we want you to stay tuned for this. Welcome back to Hard Questions. We always like to end the program with a scripture. And today we go to Ephesians where Paul wrote to the church and he said, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all this, to stand. Praise be to God. What a, what a powerful word. And speaking of powerful words, Dr. Bill, you have a, a, a piece that you've prepared, a teaching that you've prepared, and, and we want to make this available. As you've watched this program today, if you want to know more about spiritual warfare, more importantly, what spiritual warfare is and how God gives this to us, blesses us with this to protect us in this life, we will be happy to send a copy of this on to you. Yeah. So you'd want to speak on that? Well, basically, I, I, I taught through the armor of God, Praise God. and, uh, you know, what Jay said earlier about that, you know, these, the pieces of the armor are actually principles. Right. And so I've, I, I've, yeah. I've looked at what principle was behind each piece of the armor, and then I've used that principle to pray it on. You know, for instance, the breastplate of, right, breastplate of righteousness, that means that I'm living a righteous life. And so I want to make sure that today I'm living a righteous life so that when temptation comes or if the temptation comes to tell a mistruth or something like that, that I've got the breastplate of righteousness on. And so I've prayed that on and, and I'm mindful of the fact that I'm, I'm wearing it. So, you know, it's, it's based on that uh, armor of God in Ephesians 6. We indeed are empowered. Gentlemen, thank you for your testimony. Thank you for your wisdom. And thank you for just bringing the Word of God in a, in a very clear and practical and understandable way. May you be challenged that, like the prophet Micah said, to live with integrity, to treat others with kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. Amen. Thank you for being with us on the program.